I, um, I hope everyone had a good Easter break. So last moment of peace you'll probably have for the next couple of weeks as we finish all our classes and go into finals. Um, has anybody noticed the, uh, the day of our final exam? I think it's the Monday of finals week. Can you guys hear me? Hello? Yes, ma'am. You know I have insecurities about that. I, th I think the Monday of finals week, so two weeks from yesterday um, at eight o'clock in the morning, which is gonna be really harsh. My experience is there's going to be somebody who oversleeps. And my recommendation is to find a wake up buddy. Well, that sounds terrible. An alarm clock buddy, there you go. Um, somebody who can give you a wake up call and vice versa. Um, I go running with a friend and we, we run at 5.15 in the morning. So we do a text back and forth at about 4.50 to make sure that we're both awake and moving. Because it's really terrible to show up somewhere in the dark and nobody else is coming. Um, so today is all about questions and answers. And um, <sighs> trying to find our thing on Blackboard. So first I'm gonna share, wait. Somewhere is a window. There we go. Will our final cover everything from the semester or just the next chapters we'll be covering? Well, if you read the syllabus, you'll see it covers the entire year, General Chemistry 1 and General Chemistry 2. What exact date is our final? Oh, good. Somebody knows. May 2nd. Right, May 2nd. Um, May 2nd is really important. Our exam is at 8 o'clock in the morning. And when I leave that day, May 2nd, at about... 5 p.m. I assume, I don't intend to come back because the very next morning at eight, I have to take my husband to the hospital for an operation and he will not be mobile for like two weeks. So I am trying very hard not to leave him by himself. So I'm just, I'm just letting you know, there's gonna be a lot of stuff that happens during that time. We have to conclude all of our business on that day. So some of you are thinking, General Chemistry 1, we didn't do that this semester. Well, we did a lot of it this semester in pieces. Um, the hardest part is probably gonna be reviving all of your specific stoichiometry knowledge. But would you rather have a question about calculate a K from a delta G or calculate the molar mass of this compound? So including on 429, um, oh Lord. Tamia, you're gonna have to email me. That is not a question that I can talk about right now. Okay, so exam three information. 
wait, was I about to tell you guys something else? Oh yeah, exam, general chemistry part one, I'm going to start posting review materials. We have about two weeks to review things. You should already know exam, uh, part one material. And you may not have noticed it, but we went over a lot of it in pieces as we went along. So some of that review has already occurred, but um, yeah, there will be a review thingy. And then how do you review all the stuff from this semester? Uh, I'll, I'll probably talk more about that on Friday because right now we need to talk about exam three. So you've all seen, I hope, the sample exam because I went over part of it on the day before we went to uh, Easter break. So there was a sample exam and I have posted the key. Um, just a reminder, we're gonna be in class. There will be a seating chart that will be substantially similar to the ones that we've used already. Um, you need to put your backpack at the front with all the stuff that you're not allowed to have during an exam. You have to bring your Scantron. And of course, with that comes the number two pencil. It's gonna be really similar to the previous exams with 15 multiple choice questions, possibly 16 for extra credit. Um, and four workout problems that are 10 points apiece. So really similar to what you've been seeing. Um, I'm just kind of boring when it comes to writing exams. So let's look at the exam. Or sorry, not the exam, the sample exam. Let's hope I'm not sharing the actual exam. That would be, that would be, that would only cost me like 10 extra hours of work. I don't know. So here's the sample exam and I wonder, it doesn't look exactly like this because I have an updated periodic chart. Not that it completely matters for what we're doing, but I do have all of the new elements on there. <clears throat> Um, this looks right. Stuff about Delta G, Henderson Hasselbach. pH type things that you might need to know. That one. A list of bases, weak bases and their KBs, a list of weak acids and their KAs. Um, we did a couple of these um, during class last week, but let me switch to taking questions. Anybody have one that they want to see me work out on the sample exam? Can you do workout number three? Workout number three. Let's hope. This one right here. Uh, okay. So, um, first of all, letter A. This one says entropy change for the system. So that would be um, letter A is a products minus reactants question. So delta S for the reaction is going to be our products. So that's the water and the <clears throat> CO2. Those are both products. I think it's a good idea to mark things this way so you don't forget which ones are which and mix up the numbers and just, I'll, I, I do it. So we've got four times the water, that's the 189, plus two times the 214 from the carbon dioxide. And then we're gonna subtract um, two times the methanol and, 
three times the oxygen. So 189 times four, 214 times two. And then I'm gonna subtract from that 240 times two and 205 times three, and I get 89. <clears throat> and letter B, delta S of the surroundings, That's minus delta H over T. This is um, 25 Celsius, which is 298K. Should be in the head by now. Um, <clears throat> so I need to get delta H of the reaction. That's again, products minus reactants. So I'm gonna take, um, four times the negative 242 plus two times the negative 201 and subtract two times, oh, look at what I did. I didn't mark it and I wrote the wrong one down. It's 394 for the carbon dioxide and 201 for the methanol negative 201 and the oxygen is zero. So just to make it complete. Um, all right, so pull out the calculator again. And I get four times negative 242 two times negative 394. And then there's um, two times negative 201, but I'm subtracting that. So it's really adding 402. And I get this absurdly large exothermic um, Delta H. Now remember that Delta S's are usually in joules, not in kilojoules. And so I'm also going to convert um, that delta H uh, from kilojoules to joules. So I'm going to multiply by a thousand joules per kilojoule. Um, I'm going to change the sign back to positive, divide by 298. And I get 4,544 <laughs> joules per Kelvin per mole. That's a really big number. So letter C, what is delta S of the universe? That's delta S plus delta S of the surroundings, right? System plus surroundings. So that's the 89 plus 4,544. Nine and four is 13, carry one. Nine and four is 13, carry one, six. Hopefully somebody checked and made sure I did that right, or you're looking at the, <laughs> the sample key. 
because I just did that in my head, which is always dangerous. It kind of looks right. Um, and then letter D. Yes, this is spontaneous. Because, that's a really important word, delta S of the universe is positive. You could also do it in um, equation form, delta S universe greater than zero. Dr. E? Yes. Um. The delta S of the universe, is that the same as the delta S R, the first one that you did? No. Delta S of the universe is... Oh, I didn't even see it. Is C? Okay. Also, in the delta S um, R, why is, what does the degree sign mean? Standard states. Okay. It means that everything's at... All the, all the gases are at one bar and all of the solids and liquids are pure in the product state and in the reactant state. Just mean you're combining the standard, those molar amounts that are in the balanced chemical reaction under standard uh, conditions, which is defined as um, temp the pressure is one bar and um, if anything was a was a uh, aqueous, then it would be at one molar, um, and then the twenty five Celsius is specified in the question. But that's pretty normal because the tables that are in the back of our book are for twenty five Celsius. Okay. Anything else? Something's in the chat. I don't know what it is. Okay. Any other questions about this one? I, I hope that after some effort, you're gonna feel pretty good about the whole products minus reactants things, finding your stoichiometric coefficients, figuring out which ones are your products, which ones are your reactants. Um, as long as you're careful, you know, these quest, that part of the question's not super hard. This thing, delta S of the surroundings being delta H over T, or negative delta H over T, that is here, and so is the delta S universe uh, question. I don't have products minus reactants on the front of the exam because I feel like it's not asking too much for you to know that. Okay, so the next question that I saw was question four. So let me do four. Uh, question four is a lot of products minus reactants. Well, I guess it's not any more than the last one. So letter A, delta H reaction. That's um, our product. This is our product, just the bottom line. So products. Uh, and it has a coefficient of one, so 11.3 minus two times 90.25. Wow, that's a lot of digits I stuck on there. Um, plus a half times zero. Since oxygen is an element in its standard state, its delta H of formation is zero. So we get, I don't know what, 11.3 minus two times 
um, so delta H is minus 169.2 kilojoules per mole. We're gonna do something very similar for letter B. Delta S of the reaction is products minus reactants. So that's 355.7 minus two times 211 plus a half times 205. And I get minus 168.8 joules per Kelvin per mole. Here we go. Um, okay, so that's letter B. And letter C, delta G, is delta H minus T delta S. So that's minus 169.2 kilojoules per mole. It's our delta H minus 298 times minus 168.8 joules per Kelvin per mole. But our first number is in kilojoules and this number is in joules. So I need to convert. It's one kilojoule over a thousand joules, and that'll get rid of our joules to kilojoules. Wait. Right. 168.8 joules per Kelvin per mole in a Divide by a thousand, multiply by 298, and um, I'm gonna change the sign and add it to 169.2. Well, negative 169.2. And I get negative 118.9. Oh, D, the equilibrium constant. So K, sorry, let's start with the other one. Delta G in minus RT natural log of K. So if I divide both sides by negative RT, I get natural log of K equals delta G zero over RT, negative delta G zero over RT. And to get rid of a natural log, you use the exponential. So K is equal to E to the minus delta G zero over RT. And that's what I'm gonna use. So K is E to the minus negative 118.9 kilojoules per mole over 8.314 joules per Kelvin per mole times 298K. Oh, that's a lot of parentheses. And I gotta add one more because my uh, delta G is in kilojoules per mole. I need it to be in joules because we've got this R down here in joules. And in the numerator, kilojoules, that, that doesn't work. They won't cancel out. So I'm going to multiply this by 1,000 joules per kilojoule. So 
So let's see what's in that exponent. 118.9, which is negative, multiply by 1,000, divide by 8.314, divide by 298. And then there's also a negative sign in front. So my negative number is changed to a positive number. So that's e to the plus, plus 76.2, which is 1.29 times 10 to the 33rd power. That's pretty big. That's a, that's a, very, that's a big number. That's 10 times bigger than Avogadro's number. That's a big number. Ms. Reese, I don't think that's right. Uh-oh, what did I do wrong? Um, did you convert the negative 118.9 kilojoules per mole or something? Because it seems like it should be e to the 47.9. I did? You just have two different answers on your um, answer key in here. Uh oh. What did I do wrong? I don't know what I did wrong, but using the same numbers and typing it in again. Ooh, I get 47.99. Well, I did the problem yesterday, and the numbers you had on your um, on your um, answer key was actually the numbers you got. I got too. Does this look more like it? Yeah. Something got typed in wrong somewhere, but it's working now, ish. Um, and then letter E, is this reaction spontaneous? Um, delta G is negative, which is basically the same thing as saying delta S of the universe is positive because they're related by negative T. So <clears throat> you don't have to write anything about K here, um, but the fact, right, the fact that delta G is negative indicates spontaneity. Okay. There were lots of other questions in the, in the chat. So that was workout problem number four and Judea wants multiple choice seven, 16 and 17. Uh, all right, so let's start with seven. Seven. So the first thing that happens in question seven is you mix two solutions together and they dilute. There's 50 in the first one and 50 in the second one. And so initially they both have volumes of 50 and in the final state, the volume is hundred milliliters. So they're each being diluted by half. So the molarity at the end of the barium nitrate is 1.0 times 10 to the minus five molar times 50 mils, that's the initial volume, over 100 mils, that's the final volume. So I just multiply that by um, 0.5, right? 50 over 100 is 0.5. And um, 
you can do it fully out 50 times, 100 divide, and get 5.0 times 10 to the minus 6. Or you could just say it's 0.5 times 10 to the minus 5. So that's the final molarity of the barium nitrate. For the, for the potassium sulfate, M2 is 2 times 10 to the minus 5. That's the initial times 50 over 100. which is one times 10 to the minus five. Or you could just say it's half. So once I have the two molarities, I can find um, what is QSP equal to? Um, it's gonna be the barium concentration, which is five times 10 to the minus six times the sulfate concentration, which is one times 10 to the minus five. And I get 5.0 times 10 to the minus 11. By adding exponents. Now this QSP, right? The reactants in this case, as for all the QSP problems, is the solid and the products is the ions. And our KSP is 1.1 times 10 to the minus 10. So, or sorry, that's our K. And our Q is at five times 10 to the minus 11. So it's smaller and the direction is towards ions to get to equilibrium, which means we will not make a precipitate. So you have to know dilution, QSP, and which way you have to move to get to a precipitate. This is a pretty complex question. Are there any concerns about this one before I go on? This was in the, um, K the KSP PowerPoint. There was I think two questions very similar to this that we did in class. Can you just explain more why um, a precipitate won't form? So when we do the QSP, which is, um, it has the same form as the KSP. Uh, it's for this reaction. And so you have to multiply the concentrations of the barium times the concentration of the sulfate. So that's what the QSP form is. And so I got the concentration of the barium and the sulfate to get this number. And this number is smaller than the KSP that's given in the question. So since the Q is smaller, I have, I'm gonna be moving towards reactant, uh, towards products, which is the ions. Since I'm going, I can make more ions before I get to equilibrium, a solid is not going to form. I don't have enough ions present in the solution to make the solid. So basic um, rule of thumb is if QSP is smaller than KSP, then a precipitate won't form. Correct. Okay, thank you. And the opposite is true, right? If Q is on this side, then the motion would be towards the solid, which means Q is too large. There's too many ions in the solution and they're gonna have to make the precipitate to get to equilibrium. Okay, so that was question seven and 16 and 17. 
16 is a products minus reactants question. So that's our product. And this is the reactant. So we have um, two times 51.8 minus two times 86.7. And oxygen is an element in the standard state, so it's gonna be zero for the delta G of formation. And so that's like 100 minus 90. Hundred minus a hundred and seventy negative seventy. Maybe I should be smart and actually calculate it instead of just doing it in my head. Yeah, negative sixty nine point eight. And 17, for the reaction below at 25, delta G is negative 5.31 kilojoules per mole. What is the value of Kp? This is like part of the workout. Kp is E to the minus delta G over RT. So negative 5.31 kilojoules per mole times 1,000 joules per kilojoule over 8.314 times 298. Okay, so that was negative 5.31 times 1,000 divided by 8.314 divided by 298. And so I get inside these parentheses, it's negative 2.14, but there's a negative sign outside that. So I changed the sign to positive. I'm gonna get E to the 2.14, which is 8.53. Just letter A. Dr. Reeves, did you make a mistake on the the, um, the answer key because you chose E for 17? <sighs> Probably. Did I work it out on the page? Did I forget to put two negative signs in? Yeah, you worked it out, and it seemed like you was getting the right answer, but you just chose E. So I put 8.53 on the paper, and I picked E? No, you put E 2.14, and then you picked E. Yeah, it should be A. <laughs> I mean, E to the 2.14 is not 0.117. You did actually put the right number, but you just chose E, so. And that's the, that's the um, yeah, that'll happen. So everybody fix that. If I'm smart, I'll go back and fix it later. Um, So what was next in the chat? Workout problem number two. <coughs> the KSP for PBI2 is 1.4 times 10 to the minus eight. Write the chemical equation. Solids are always the reactants in these problems. and the ions are always the products.
the KSP expression is always the product of the ions, right? It's um, solubility product basically named that way because the K is just the product of the ions. The pure solid does not appear in the denominator because it's a pure solid. Um, set up an equilibrium table. So if my equilibrium table looks like this, Initially, I don't know how much of that I have, but I'm going to make um, some lead ion and I'm going to make 2x of the I minus ion. And sorry, initially there's zero of those, so it's just x and 2x. And the equation to solve for the molar solubility. So that's, um, the equation is going to be 1.4 times 10 to the minus 8, because that's our KSP, and that's equal to the lead, that's the X, times the I minus, which is the 2X quantity squared. 2X quantity squared is 4X squared, so it's going to be 4 x to the third power. So to get x, I'm going to say 1.4 times 10 to the minus 8 divided by 4. And then I have to take the cube root of both sides. Now, a lot of you have a cube root button on your calculators. I don't, so I can't demonstrate that. Um, but most of the new types of calculators have a cube root button directly on there. If you don't have a cube root button, you have to raise your value. Um, so this is what I get when I divide by the four, I get 3.5 times 10 to the minus 9. And so x is going to be the cube root of 3.5 times 10 to the minus 9. And on mine, I have to raise it to the one third power. So on, on my calculator, that's the Y to the X button. But most of you will not have that issue. Cube roots are a pain if you don't have a cube root button. Um, So C is set up an equilibrium table and the equation. So that was, um, and then D is to find the value. So that's D. And on this question I threw as a bonus, find the concentration of the I minus. And um, so this is, this is our molar solubility. which I set up as the X. And for that bonus, um, the I minus concentration equals two times X, which is um, 3.04 times 10 to the minus three molar. That looks like two XX.
Yeah. Hopefully I did that one right. So I have a question. So for the ice table you did on the uh, answer key, you put S's. Can you also put S's in, a, in place of X? Is that what it is? Yeah, you could put any letter you want. OK. Right, it's just a variable. Um, X is often used. Um, in these solubility problems, molar solubility, we like to call it S. And so S is a really good choice for this one. And when I was writing the X's, I was like, probably do S on this problem, but um, right. So for this, the amount of the PBI2 that dissolves is, is X, which is the molar solubility then. So that would also be S. Um, but an ice table, you can use, it's just a variable. So the, the name that you pick is, is not critical. And um, for whatever reason, in the, in the official, official um, equilibrium stuff, they use the Greek letter Xi, which looks like this. And I have the worst time drawing. Don't, don't try to do that one. The Greek, the Greek version of X is Xi. And yeah, which is really sad because this letter is the Greek letter chi, which is like a CH and is not the one that gets used. Sorry, I have a tendency to babble when I'm working, working problems. Um, wait, okay. Workout problem two, multiple choice 13. I said the KSP is always the what? The product of the ions in the solution, just like that. Um, okay, wait. I already forgot. What question was it? 13? 13. 13. All right. Which of the following substances is thermodynamically stable? So it's just the definition of this term right here. It means, means delta G formation is, is negative. So there's only one with a delta G of formation, which is negative. So that's letter D. So that, that problem is a really complicated way of saying, what's the definition of thermodynamically stable? It means delta G is negative. Delta G of formation is negative, sorry. So that's 13. And then, have we done the whole workout? What, oh, it's 9.52, crap, sorry. I said a bad word. Um, so I wanna say goodbye to everybody. Uh, woo! Um, I did not schedule a different study session for this exam. And so I'm gonna stay on and finish up number one. Um, I hope that the person who asked me is able to do that. Who was that? Asante, can you stay on for another couple of minutes? Yes, I'm not, I'm not available. Okay, so let, me fin so let me say goodbye to everyone who has to go. And I'm going to finish this question. Because um, I, don't, I don't want you to go off without hearing what happens. I mean, you can look at my key also, which <laughs> may or may not be 100% accurate as we saw. Well, I've worked it out right. I just didn't write the letter down right. Um, okay. So um, question one. First of all, we have in this solution, we have water, we have sodium, and we have bicarbonate. So um, is the sodium or the bicarbonate the species that's affecting our pH. And the, the, there's a clue right here. There's a Ka for the um, carbonic acid. And the conjugate base of carbonic acid is the bicarbonate ion. 
So the answer is HCO3 minus, because if carbonic acid is a weak acid, then bicarbonate, which is its conjugate base, should be a weak base. And the chemical reaction, when you put it in water, it makes its conjugate acid, carbonic acid, plus hydroxide. That's what weak bases do. You put them in water and they make their conjugate acid and a hydroxide ion, but not very much of it because they're weak. And so then you can make an equilibrium table which is that you have um, 0.10 molar of the uh, bicarbonate. You don't have any water. Oh, sorry. The water isn't important in the equilibrium. You have plenty of water. Um, and initially, you don't have any of those. You're going to lose and gain and gain. So it'll be 0 0.10 minus x, x, and x. And you get that. In letter C, um, sorry, that was letter that was letter B. This is letter C. Letter D. Set up the equation. Uh, the Ka is four point five times ten to the minus seven, and that's equal to x squared over point one zero minus x. Then you can solve that problem. You're going to have to approximate. Ka is small. Oh, I don't want the Ka, I want the Kb. What is my issue? Right, so the KB is 2.22 times 10 to the minus eight, and we get 2.22 times 10 to the minus eight equals X squared over 0 0.10. So X squared is 0 0.10 times 2.22 times 10 to the minus eight and x will be the square root of all of that. So 2.22 times 10 to the minus eight times 0 0.1, and then square rooted is 4.7 times 10 to the minus five. This makes me feel like I did it wrong on the key. I did it really fast yesterday. That was a mistake, obviously. Um, so that's my X, but X in this problem is not hydronium, it's a hydroxide. So what that tells me is OH minus is 4.7 times 10 to the minus five. And minus the log of that, is 4.33 and pH is gonna be 14 minus the 4.33, which is 
Is that okay, Visanti? Is there something else that's... How did I calculate the KB again? KB equals KW over KA. KW is 10 to the minus 14 over the 4.5 times 10 to the minus seven. Dr. Reeves? Yes. So we're not having another um, study session this evening? I had not scheduled one, and now that class is over, um, I don't know how, I don't quite know what I should do. Should I, should I just say, just like last time, we'll have it at four in our classroom? Um, I, I mean, I would come, but I guess I don't know about other students. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's, um, I was kind of thinking that the hour would be enough, but people are still asking questions. We used KB because it was a weak base, yes. Um, Reginald votes yes. Okay, so I'll say at four o'clock, I'll be in our classroom. Um, I will, yeah. That's what I'll do. Okay. I'm gonna be on campus, so I'll just do it. I'll, I'll put an announcement on Blackboard. Oh, and I forgot to ask you guys questions on the iClicker. Dang. The iClicker is open, so hopefully, you opened it up and put yourself in attendance or whatever. Did that happen? Uh, I didn't know we had to uh, join iClick here today since we were going over to Zoom. I don't know. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't say anything. I should have asked one question. I meant to, and then we just jumped in and started doing problems. Um, and when I said that, a whole bunch of people joined just now. Looks like. But a, a lot of the people who didn't join were definitely here on the call, so. Okay, um, right. So today I'll delete it from the, from the grades on iClicker because most people didn't do it or a bunch of people didn't do it. And I'll see you guys at four. I'll put an announcement up. 